The One Piece manga just revealed three things that no one expected. The ancient robot from the Void Century attacked the Celestial Dragons just 200 years ago, Vegapunk has possibly the most OP devil fruit in the story, and it looks like the genius scientist will also join the Straw Hats on their ship once they leave Egghead Island. But how likely is that actually? Well, as we'll see, really not all that unlikely at all. And why does Vegapunk want to leave this place? Well, Egghead Island seems incredibly small compared to most of the islands that we've been to recently. Dressrosa had an entire city on it, Totland was a whole archipelago, and Wano, multiple islands mushed together. So Egghead Island really looks tiny in comparison. It's really only Vegapunk's giant lab and a bit of greenery around it, but despite its size, it's an island that seems to hold way more importance than almost any other place the Straw Hats have gone to. It's filled to the brim with the most advanced technology in existence right now, holding all the knowledge remaining from the ancient kingdom. It's the place where pretty much all the major technological advancement for the government have been created, including the Pacifista and the Seraphim. In other words, it's the island that holds pretty much all of Vegapunk's research and knowledge, so why would he want to go away from there? Well, because it turns out that this island isn't only Vegapunk's base of operation, but in a way, a part of himself. Because the manga has now revealed that the scientist is actually a Devil Fruit user, which does explain his ridiculous ridiculously large hat in a very reassuring way. Vegapunk has eaten the brain brain fruit, which in Japanese is named the nomi nomi nomi, which is hilarious, objectively, but Oda really had to jump through some hoops to make this one work. You see, brain in Japanese is no, and brains is having brains, being smart is called no mize. So Oda really just decided to cut out the zoo and get his nomi nomi nomi, which is incredibly funny and one of those puns that just only work in Japanese. Now, it seems that this fruit's ability isn't high intelligence, however. Apparently, Vegapunk was born a real genius. Instead, the fruit allows its user to store and remember any type of knowledge down to the very last detail. That means that anything you want to learn, you will know by heart in an instant. You always have access to all of your knowledge at all time, and you never forget anything. Now, a side effect of this fruit is that one's brain needs to keep growing the more knowledge one acquires. You know, in order to keep up with all that data, thus Vegapunk's very bizarre appearance. Now, before we can discuss what that has to do with Vegapunk wanting to sail away with Luffy, I think we have to discuss this fruit in more detail first. Because this ability is just absolutely overpowered. There's really no other way of saying it. If you have the ability to learn anything you want without ever forgetting any of it, this would make you the most powerful person on the planet in no time. Now, maybe you could say, oh, knowing stuff doesn't mean you can actually do anything against someone like Blackbeard with this Gura Gura no Mi or the Darkness Fruit, but that's just not true. I mean, just look at Vegapunk. Using his powers, he has deciphered all the knowledge available from the Ancient Kingdom. He has created giant robots, laser weapons, he has discovered how to use Sea Prism Stone to nullify Devil Fruit powers, and he can literally clone Devil Fruits. In other words, if Vegapunk really wanted, he could just build an army of Seraphim for himself and take over the world. Really, when you've read every strategy and psychology book in existence, when you know everything that is to know about anyone out there, in my eyes, this makes you pretty close to invincible, a, a god even if you want. Knowledge is power, as they like to say, and Vegapunk is already intelligent and has exclusive access to advanced knowledge, which makes his fruit even more potent than it would already be if, let's say, someone like Luffy ate it. I mean, this man has literally managed to create alter egos connected to a central brain. In fact, when you really think about just how strong this fruit makes him, I'm really wondering how Oda will nerf it, because, let's be real, he will have to. I mean, why work with the government at this point if you could just overthrow them with your own technology? We already know that Vegapunk seems to share the same cause as Dragon. So the only explanation I have for this right now, really, is that the government has something up its sleeve that Vegapunk just can't go up against openly. Like, either they have a way to hold him hostage in a way, which would be incredibly effective, 
even with someone as powerful as him. Or another explanation might be that the Gorosei and Emo have access to ancient technology even more advanced than Vegapunks. You know, the type of technology that allowed them to overthrow the technologically advanced ancient kingdom in the first place. I mean, if you have any ideas about this, I would love to hear them. Because presented with its powers, the Nomi 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 does sound like the most powerful devil fruit in existence. Now really, I'm only curious if Vegapunk could clone his Nomi 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 to make more Nomi Nomi Nomi's and give each of those clones of his a Nomi Nomi as well to multiply the effect. And yeah, I did that on purpose, but it was kind of fun to say. But maybe this immense power is exactly the reason why the government is now coming for his head, because they feared that he could actually surpass them. Anyways, as a side effect of consuming the entirety of the Library of Ahara and all the knowledge stored inside it, Vegapunk's brain has grown too large to carry around with him any longer. You know what, maybe that was the original weak point of this fruit, that at some point it would just break your neck or crush its user under its own weight. But Vegapunk found a way to separate his brain and connect himself and all of his alter egos remotely to that central hub. And so the at this point unfathomably large brain is incorporated into the upper levels of his lab, labeled as the Punk Records. Vegapunk actually dreams of connecting every single person in the world to this pool of knowledge, which does sound like a nice idea, kind of like the internet of the One Piece world. However, Jinbei raises some really important privacy concerns here. Because I mean, giving everyone access to Vegapunk's brain, like the other Vegapunks, would that turn everyone into a Vegapunk? It would also mean everyone would know everything about everyone all the time, which does sound a little bit like a Black Mirror episode, if you ask me. Now, Vegapunk just sweeps this comment aside, saying that science needs to keep advancing. And I think that this right here might hint at Vegapunk's biggest character flaw in general. He puts scientific advance over his morality. I mean, clearly Vegapunk in a way agrees with Dragon's plans and dislikes the government, but getting funding for his research was apparently more important to him. Similarly, he, Caesar, Judge and Queen were conducting ethically highly questionable research on humans and prisoners, killing many and disfiguring others. I mean, Look at the emotionless Vinsmoke family or the giants on Punk Hazard. I really do not think that Vegapunk is a bad guy at heart, but his priorities make him a quite morally ambiguous character. Same as the people you know who watched this video up to this point, but haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Hmm. Now of course all of this would fit in really nicely with the reveal that Vegapunk is also a perfectionist. He deemed Momo's Devil Fruit a failure because the colors didn't match, or the lightsaber that actually freaking works like the ones in Star Wars because they also attract bugs. I mean that's just crazy but once again you can kind of see that this is a guy who would put his ethics aside to bring a research project to its perfection. And really when you think about it I think it takes a slightly messed up person to even bear not forgetting anything in the first place. This is really another drawback of the fruit. Our brains are actually hardwired to process and forget about traumatic and hurtful events in our life. So just imagine that you could never forget any accident or terrible thing that ever happened in your entire life. Instead, you can always recall anything, any physical or mental pain you ever felt in perfect detail. That sounds kind of unhealthy and in reality probably would make life pretty much unlivable, I think. What this means, however, is that Egghead Island is a living part of Vegapunk, so why does he ask Luffy to take him away? Well. There's a few possibilities. Maybe Vegapunk wants to get back to Elbaf where all of Ohara's knowledge is stored. Maybe he wants to find Dragon who is just starting his big campaign with the revolutionaries to help him in his fight. Or maybe he's just fearing for his life. I mean, genius that he is, Vegapunk might already have figured out that the government is coming for his head. We've already seen Chaka telling Dragon that he's expecting to die soon. But is it realistic that we will leave Egghead Islands with Vegapunk on board? Maybe even as the next super unexpected straw hats? I think there are arguments for both sides here. I think you can't really argue that Vegapunk wouldn't make a wonderful addition to the crew, traveling to Elbaf, and finally Love Tail. It might even be his knowledge and his technology that's the key to reaching Love Tail and defeating the world governments. He would be helping the other straw hats reach their full potential along the way, and it would also be a great way to have Luffy and Dragon reunite very soon too. However, on the other hand, you could also argue that Vegapunk knows way too 
too much and is way too powerful to be an actual asset to Luffy. I mean, his knowledge about the world would basically make Robin, and especially Frankie, pretty much redundant in a way. And overall, it might just make the Straw Hats too powerful going into the endgame. So instead, giving Luffy and Co. some information and a couple of upgrades here or there might be the safer route to go down for Oda, ultimately having Vegapunk actually die during this arc. And Dragon might be coming for Egghead Island anyways. I mean, the chapter strongly suggests that Kuma is trying to save his daughter Bonnie after Luchi announced that they would kill her if they encountered her another time and that she would be of no more use to the government. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe Bonnie was the thing that the Gorosei used to blackmail Kuma and Vegapunk with. And it might also mean that Kuma is actually also connected to Vegapunk's brain, the secret seventh clone. I think this chapter definitely gives us hope that we will see Kuma regain his real personality though, especially since Vegapunk seems to be very good with disconnecting brains and keeping them functioning at a different place. Now, Kuma as a cyborg is already pretty damn impressive as a feature of engineering, but not nearly as impressive as the giant robot soldier located on the islands. And the manga has now finally confirmed that this is actual technology from the Void Century. However, it's been active a lot, lot more recently than any of us could have expected. Instead of just rusting away, sitting there for the past 800 years, apparently it climbed the red line in an attempt to attack Marijua 200 years ago. After it was then stopped by the government, the scientists brought it to Egghead Island to study it, and as suspected, it was the inspiration for the giant robot that Vegapunk has built as well. Now, this timing is fascinating for a few reasons. First, someone actually remembered how to use this technology 200 years ago and was able to use it against the government. Second, the government was actually able to stop this thing somehow before they had any of Vegapunk's current inventions, and as Robin reminds us, it also fits in perfectly with the timeline where the fishmen were first acknowledged as people, and not fish, and were invited to the reverie. This is actually something that Hachi tells us about way early in the story. Now, there are two other events that take place 200 years ago. That random ship that fell from the sky had made it to Skypea during that timeline, and the giant fighting fish appeared on Greenbit on Dressrosa. Could all of these events be connected? Really, there is no way of telling right now. But what Oda seems to be suggesting, or at least wants us to believe, is that the fishmen were the ones who sent the giant robot to attack the world government in order to gain more rights, I guess. And if that's actually true, Fisher Tiger, another fishman, might have been the ultimate foreshadowing for this. I mean, maybe he was even inspired by his ancestors to climb the red line himself. I'm really incredibly curious about what really happened here. But I do also want to talk about the robot's mysterious power source. Because it's the second time now that a Vegapunk mentions a limitless energy source, an eternal flame of sorts that was apparently used to power these giant machines. I think I've seen some people suggest that it might be Frankie's cola technology, however, as we've seen more than once, it's neither limitless nor exactly convenient to use. Instead, it does kind of look like the robot has a giant furnace in its belly, and the idea of an eternal flame does sound a little bit like something that we are actually currently working on here on Earth. Now, you're probably aware that nuclear power is splitting atoms and then releasing the energy stored inside the bonds, which does create a lot of dangerous radioactive waste in the process. However, you can do this process in reverse to create a lot more clean energy by combining lighter atoms into heavier ones under a lot of heat. This process is called nuclear fusion, and it's basically how stars work. So our sun technically is a giant floating fusion reactor. And that technology actually exists, even if it's not quite yet ready for actual use. But since nuclear fusion is also referred to as the sun in a bottle, that really made my alarm bells ring with the entire story of Sun God Nika lately. I mean, Luffy's fire powers and the Nika fruit's connection to the Ancient Kingdom and Joy Boy may be one of the technologies that the Ancient Kingdom used was nuclear fusion or the powers directly from the sun slash sun god devil fruit. But really, this is only one of the many lost technologies from the Void Century that have completely changed how we look at the One Piece world and the story overall. And I broke all of it down in this video right here if you want to watch a little bit longer.